Welcome to a little bit of Calm and Crazy. My name is Jennifer and today I'm excited to be able to share with you some affordable high-end looking decor. I don't know about you, but I like things to look good without breaking the bank. If you are new to my channel, I love sharing some easy DIYs, affordable decor, and if that sounds good to you, I hope that you will hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, you can find me on Instagram. It's a little bit of Calm and Crazy over there just like it is here. Today's video is sponsored by Sherbonder and I'm so grateful to them for supporting me and my channel. Right now the world is flipped upside down and we are in crazy times. So I am not asking anyone to go get anything to recreate these projects. If you don't have the items right now, this video will still be here when we are able to get out and about again. I will also be giving you some suggestions for other items that you can use instead. Please stay home, stay safe, I am so grateful for our essential workers and our frontline workers and for everything that you do. I'm also really grateful to those of you who are staying at home and keeping our loved ones and yourself safe. Now let's go ahead and jump right on into today's projects. For my very first project, I grabbed these two adorable little blue jays from Dollar General. They were just a dollar each. Now you can get similar things like this at like Dollar Tree or even like the 99 cent store. They're super easy to come by, but all I did was grab some gold spray paint and look how adorable these are after a good coating of that gold spray paint. I love these, but here's the kicker. Neiman Marcus has three gold birds and they are asking $290 for them. I am sorry, but there is not a chance I can pay $290 for three birds, especially when my two birds only cost me $2. For my next project, I am using the rug from Dollar Tree as well as this black basket. You can always swap the basket out for a different basket if you have a different shape or size that you would rather use. I'm also using some black felt that I picked up at Dollar Tree, but if you have some fabric or a thicker ribbon, you can always substitute and use that instead. So to start off with, I'm just cutting one and a half inch strips from the felt so that I can use that to help me secure the fabric, and you'll see what I mean in just a moment. Before I cut the rug, I wanna make sure that I know how much I need, so I'm just measuring exactly where it fits along the side of the basket. So depending on the size or what basket you are using, you would want to do this first as well. But before I can make any cuts, I am reinforcing it with the felt that I cut earlier and some fabric glue using my Sherbonder hot glue gun to do that and my Sherbonder fabric glue. If you've been around, this is no surprise that I absolutely love using the fabric glue. Here you see that I'm using some white fabric glue. I actually am gonna switch over to the black in a minute because yes, they have black fabric glue and I just learned that recently. Yeah, it's a little bit of a game changer. I chose to use the black because I felt like it wouldn't show through as easily just in case and so just a personal thing. Now, I have found that Amazon only carries like the thicker fabric glue sticks, but I did find the thinner ones on Walmart's website if you're trying to find them. Um, you can also find the thinner ones at Hobby Lobby if that is a place that you're trying to find them, if you've had a hard time finding them. For fabric glue sticks, for the most part, I like the thinner ones. Now on this project, I honestly wouldn't have minded having the thicker ones, but I didn't have any thicker ones on hand. And you can tell I'm being really generous with my fabric glue because I did not want this going anywhere unraveling. I wanted it to stay together. So I just measured out handle to handle so I would know where to put this next piece of felt because that's where I will be cutting the rug in just a moment because I'm gonna be cutting two different pieces of the rug. That way, both of my seams will line up handle to handle and then repeating on the other side, handle to handle. And that will make sense when I put everything together in just a moment. Now, I wanted to make sure my ends were secured as much as you need to make sure that that bottom is really secure. And so I'm just taking the extra pieces after the sides and doing the bottom. I will be honest, making sure that that bottom or that 
middle piece is what you're seeing right now is secure is probably the most important part because that is the part that will come like start unraveling it will just start kind of separating from the rest so if you want to do a piece all the way across and not have a gap like i do that would probably be the best suggestion because i do have to go back in and really make sure that i have those pieces together later on that was a little mistake that i made um, that I did have to kind of correct later. So after you have it completely secure, then you can go ahead and trim it out. So I started with the bottom and then I just trimmed one of the sides. I went from that to attaching it on and again, using my hot glue in order to do this. This is when I brought out my big guns. This is my cordless Surebonder glue gun. This is the big bad boy. I love this because I really wanted the high heat and this guy gives off a lot of glue. I really wanted to make sure that this was staying on at the time. So I started, as I told you, I would start where the handle was right in that middle and I just worked my way around that top and I secured it all the way around till I got to the other handle. Then I trimmed. It is not easy trimming once it is already attached to the basket, but I didn't trust myself to trim it appropriately or exactly where I needed it beforehand. So that is how I did it the first time. The second time I went ahead and just trimmed it and I actually did just fine. I repeated the exact same process with that second piece of rug. Now you can use a different rug or you can just use the bottom half of your first rug. So it really only takes one rug to finish out this project and you just need to go ahead and secure down your felt your ribbon or your fabric with some fabric glue again trim out your rug this time I went ahead and I trimmed it out completely and then I'm just attaching it seam to seam on the sides using hot glue again and once I have it completely secure on the top of the basket, I am now going in with my hot glue and making sure that my seams on the sides are completely secured down using the hot glue, really making sure that they are butted up well together as tight as I can get them and as smooth as I can get them. Because this particular basket is wider at the top than it is on the bottom, you have the fabric bunching up a little bit. So the way that I chose to fix that is to cut up in the center of that bunchiness and then cut off the two sides, creating a triangle. Once I had that triangle cut out, I went in with my hot glue gun and started to secure that down. So I placed down one side first and then I took my hot glue gun and I started placing down the other side kind of just tucking in the edges a little bit so that it would have a little bit more of a smooth edge once I did that. It is not the prettiest thing, I will be really honest, and I will show you why or how I camouflage that in just a moment. My other side actually looks a lot better than this side. I am showing you the worst side, but I still think that it came together really well and I'm super proud of this basket. So I thought I would show you the worst one so that you can kind of get an idea of like worst case scenario. Don't forget that you wanna make sure that you hot glue and secure the rug to the bottom of the basket as well so that you have a nice fit all the way around your basket. So using tassels, this is what how we're gonna camouflage those, those areas. So the first way is using my hand. I just wrap it around my fingers. I'm wrapping it around 10 times, trying to keep my fingers kind of spread out. Once I have it all wrapped around, I just slide it off. I trim or cut off the extra, and then I take a smaller piece of yarn. I wrap it around the top a couple of times. I tie it into a knot, and then I take the bottom loops and I cut them so that they are no longer looping. Then I trim the tassel so all of my bottom is even, and there you have it. Now, an easier way to do it, honestly, than using your hand is find something that you have lying around. So here is a deck of cards. I'm just using the box. I'm wrapping it around again 10 times. I slide it off while well, I cut it, then slide it off. And then the same thing. I take a smaller piece, wrap it around the top, cut the bottom loops, trim it so it's the same length. Either way works just fine, whichever one you want to do. So for this basket, I have a total of nine 
tassels that I made and all I did after that was take another piece of yarn to string them onto. In order to string them, I did tie a little knot at the end of my yarn and that made it really easy to thread it through the tops of each of the tassels. Once I did that, I got my basket and the string of tassels and I wrapped it around the basket and tied a knot to give me a temporary security or secure hold I should say and then I went back in with my glue gun and secured the tassels more permanently onto my basket. While I'm securing my tassels onto my basket I'm making sure that I'm covering up those areas that I wanted covered up so specifically those areas with the seams and that was how I camouflaged those areas and I think that it did a fantastic job and this is so on trend right now having a multicolored basket tassels all those things I think this is super cute and finding basket baskets like this can range anywhere from like 50 to 200 dollars depending on where you look and I was able to create this basket for under three dollars for my next project, I'm using another one of these Dollar Tree rugs, and I absolutely love this project. It is so easy, so adorable. Let's just get right into it. To start, I went ahead and I removed the tags, including the care of instruction, because I just didn't want it in the way while I was working. So you're gonna take your rug and you're just gonna fold it in thirds, overlapping those middle seams right on top of each other at least a about a quarter of an inch you might go over just a little bit more as you can see both of the edges are black on black and that's exactly what we want and our black fabric glue is going to match it perfectly so once you have it folded over then you're just going to go in with your hot glue fabric glue so starting in the center and working my way towards the edge so at first i just start by placing it down the hot glue a little by little and then I got nervous that possibly the hot glue would go through and make the rug stick to the other side so I decided that I better go ahead and put something in between and I love that Sherbonder has these really thick silicone squares now you've probably seen me use this before I paint on them I glue on them they're fantastic so I just took one of those I slid it right in between Probably didn't actually need it. The glue did not go through, but I did like having that extra security so I wasn't having to be as careful. I repeated the exact same thing on the other side and then I went in with the fabric, fabric hot glue and I sealed off one of the ends as well. After that, I went ahead and I stuffed the pillow as full as I wanted it. And then I got my fabric hot glue again. I sealed off that second end you could leave it right here if you wanted to, but I went in with my rotary trimmer because I wanted my edges to look nice and clean and I trimmed up my edges so they were perfectly even. Well, let's be honest, nothing's perfectly even, but so they look pretty even. And I love this, it's super easy. I love that it matches the basket from the previous project and I just absolutely adore this. Next project was inspired by Anthropology, but I am using all Dollar Tree products in order to create it. Starting with this Dollar Tree elephant, I am sanding the trunk of the elephant in order to make it smooth and flat. And then I'm also gonna go around and make sure that other, other areas of the elephant are also smooth and that there are no strange or really bumpy areas that would detract once I paint the elephant. Using some E6000, I'm gonna place that on the bottom of the elephant in order to attach it to this glass tea light candle holder. This comes in a path of three from the Dollar Tree and I'm actually gonna be using the other two in order to support the elephant while it is setting up and drying or curing with the E6000. Now once I put the E6000 on, I like to leave it for a couple of minutes so it gets a little bit tacky before I actually place it onto whatever it is that I am trying to place it onto. Kind of like if you've ever used fake eyelashes in like an eyelash glue, always let it kind of tackify first and then place it down. Then leave it alone, honestly, I would say leave it for a good eight hours, especially because I have it balancing very carefully on the edge of the glass. 
It is not on the center. It's not being supported. It is like dangling and I want it to set up and set well. So I left my alone overnight and I came back and I have a good, strong, firm hold. And now I can go ahead and I can take this and have it painted. My elephant is going nowhere. It is firmly attached to this glass. Using a gold spray paint, I paint both the elephant as well as the glass and I give it a nice, good, thorough coat all the way around, top, bottom, everywhere. I am using the gel super glue to secure the elephant to the plates because they're plastic and the gel super glue will dry super fast and because it's also just a really odd shape, especially going from the trunk to the plate. So I add a little bit of the gel super glue to the trunk and then I have to secure the plate to that trunk and it's just a balancing act. You get the plate on there and you get it to balance and I actually had to move the elephant off the the, the bigger plate in order for me to get the right place to do that. But once you have it balanced, just walk away, let it set up and cure. Once it does that, I promise you we'll have a nice secure hold. I use the gel super glue again on the glass tea light holder. I just place it around the rim of it and then I place that directly in the center of the larger plate and again gave it time to set up, cure, dry, and left it alone. Once it was done, I wanted to go ahead and add just a little top right into the center of the top plate to give it that little finishing thing. And so I grabbed one of those little pearls from Dollar Tree and a skewer in order to help me paint it better. And I just stuck it into a piece of floral foam, same gold paint, give it a nice little spray. And going back in with my hot glue gun, I attached that right into the center of that smaller plate. And there you have it, a super cute and decorative little tray, perfect to put jewelry on. This is so cute in my daughter's room. I absolutely love this. And can you believe that the original price, $368? No, thank you. I think I will stick with my Dollar Tree version for only $4. I absolutely love it. I know my daughter loves it too. And it's just adorable. So this next one was inspired by a $39 arrangement that I saw on Pinterest and I knew that I could recreate it for much, much less. So here I am starting off with a couple of bunches of lemon or lime branches that I picked up at a thrift store for $4 each. Now I love that these have both lemons and limes on it and I also like that they have different shade variances. The reason why I'm choosing to use this is because they are actually smaller and will fit better inside the mason jar. I'm sure cutting these off is probably tearing some of you apart, but don't worry, I'm using all of this, including the greenery in this project, so nothing is gonna be going to waste. After that, I just toss all my lemons and limes straight into my mason jar. Now the cotton that I'm using for this came from Dollar Tree, but of course you can get cotton off of Amazon, Hobby Lobby, Michael's, Joann's, wherever you wanna find cotton. Now, I really have a hard time cutting my cotton, so you can fold the stem over on some of your taller pieces, but to be honest, for the most part, you're gonna end up having to cut some of your cotton stems. So this is not one of those projects where folding is going to work. To really make this work, you're going to need cotton of different heights, which is why you're going to need to cut, cut your cotton stems so that you really can get a fuller cotton feel all the way around. And so it does take about three different bunches of cotton in order to fill out the mason jar. Once you have your cotton in play, then you're gonna need to go in with your greenery and I'm using the greenery that came with my lemons. And again, I just trim that off because those were in long bunches and I just kind of fill in the gaps. My leaves are really stiff and so I went in with my fingers and I just kind of curved them under. It worked because those are wired leaves and it really helped me to be able to fidget with them and play with them. After that, I took some twine, I wrapped it around the jar and just tied it off into a bow. I absolutely love this. I love the different texture and color. I love its organic looking feel. So many beautiful things about this. I just think it is just absolutely beautiful. Stay home for the people. We love. Be creative. 
Reuse, recycle, repurpose. Craft your stash. Use what you have. Let's flatten the curve. That is just a great reminder in these crazy times from some of my absolute favorite people here on YouTube. Thanks again to Sherbonder for supporting me and sponsoring today's video. Also, thank you so much for stopping by. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a big thumbs up. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.